Hey YouTube, it's Chesapeake Motorworks. Today we're going to be working on the AC in this E39 540i. To do this, you're going to need an EPA certification, and then you're also going to need all the equipment, which I'll link in the description. So the problem with this vehicle is the AC is non-operational. It hasn't worked in probably four years. So what I want to do is pressure test the system to see if it has any leaks, and you typically do that with nitrogen. I don't have nitrogen, but because this recovery tank over here is brand new. It actually ships from the factory pre-charged with nitrogen and it's about 90 some PSI in this tank, which is appropriate for testing it. Ideally it would be closer to about 150. Um, but before we do that, what we're gonna do is check the charge on the system if there's anything at all inside of it with our test and charging manifold. So I'm gonna hook it up to these ports under the hood right here and right back here. And to do that, you'll also need adapters for a residential type manifold to R134A. And these are purchased separately. Again, I will put links in the description so that you can purchase all the same equipment that I have. So we're just gonna take the cap off on these ports and that's pretty crusty. You don't want all that junk in your system. It's I don't think this car has been worked on in at least 10 years since I've entered anyway. All right, I might need to come back because I can't get that off uh, with one hand. Before you hook up the um, AC system, you want to make sure that your gauges are closed or else your any existing charge will escape out this yellow middle charging line. All right, I'm back. I got the cap off. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see if we have any refrigerant still in the system. And you'll notice that these couplers, they're labeled low side or black, which goes to your blue line, and red or high side. This is also called the liquid line. This is the vapor line. And they're different sizes. You can't put them on the wrong one. So in this particular instance, this is gonna be the high side, this is gonna be the low side. And if I try to put the low side on the high side, it won't fit. All you do, is you pull back on the coupler, you stick it on top, you press down until it clicks in. So that's one right now. We'll hook up the other one, then we'll check to see if we have any charge. We've got no charge in the system. Zero and zero. So what we're gonna do is I think I'm just gonna try and pump nitrogen, nitrogen into it and see if there's any leaks. I'm hooked up to nitrogen on the yellow line and I have the blue and red lines connected to the car. So I'm just gonna open the correct valve here on the high side and that will allow the car to pressurize. And what we're seeing is the low side should also come up in pressure as it kind of circulates through the system. So I'm gonna let this come up to pressure. I'm gonna lock the valves down and then I'm gonna leave and go vote and see if we still have pressure remaining in the system. I'm back from voting, so we're gonna go ahead and check if we have refrigerant in our system still. So I'm exiting my car, haven't gotten out, haven't checked it yet. And it's exactly the same as it was before. So I've been gone for probably almost an hour at this point and it's holding a charge just fine. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect that nitrogen line down here. I'm just going to vent the system in the atmosphere because it's nitrogen, it's not refrigerant, it's not damaging to the environment, it's an inert gas. Then we're going to go ahead and pull a vacuum on this. I'll show you guys how to do that. And we'll get some refrigerant in this car and with any luck, everything will work. Alright guys, so I've brought the system back to atmosphere. Then what we're going to do is vacuum it down with this brand new vacuum pump. It's a two-stage vacuum pump. It's not strictly necessary, but it should work um, a little bit better than the one stage. And the first thing you need to do is there's this oil fill cap here and an oil fill reading. So on a level surface, you want to fill this up so your oil is between minimum and maximum. And in this particular instance, they provided oil with the vacuum pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this pump up. Okay, the pump has oil in it. it, took almost the entire container. Now what we're gonna do is hook 
our charge line here up to the port that it fits. This one has both, I believe, R22 and R134A style fittings. My, um, my gauge set is an R22 style. And actually, I forgot, I'm gonna do one other thing first. We got this ball valve. We're going to install that so that I can hold vacuum. So we're gonna install the ball. Then we're gonna install the line. Okay, the vacuum pump is plugged in. It, all the lines are installed. What we're gonna do is make sure our valves are open. Doesn't have to be that excessive, but make sure the valves are open. Then we're gonna turn the vacuum pump on and we're gonna watch it pull a vacuum. That's pretty quiet. And if you see the gauge, we're in the vacuum. We're gonna let that run. We should hit about 28 and a half degrees, inches of mercury where I am because I'm about a thousand feet above sea level. And we're gonna let it sit there probably half hour to an hour and let all the moisture evaporate out of the system. It's gonna boil out because we're reducing the atmospheric pressure. The vacuum pump's been running for about a half hour now, maybe a little bit longer. And we've achieved the vacuum that we're looking for about 28 inches of mercury at this altitude. And remember, that's gonna vary depending on your altitude because this is not an absolute measurement. It's a relative measurement to how much atmosphere is pressing down on you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the ball valve that way. Then we're gonna turn the vacuum pump off. And what should happen is the vacuum will remain in the system. At this point, we're gonna close our manifold. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh refrigerant in. Unfortunately, I made a slight boo-boo, and I knew I had R134A, but I don't have enough. So I've got three of these cans, they're 12 ounces each, and this system calls for 1,225 grams, or about like 43 ounces of R134A, plus or minus 25 grams. And I've only got 36 ounces, so <laughs> we're gonna be a little bit short, but I'll show you how the procedure works anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna weigh the can. So this says it has 12 ounces of refrigerant in it. Yeah, back that down so it's not so bright. So you might be able to read this. It will say net weight, 12 ounces. So we're gonna go over to our scale and I have a high precision scale made for AC. And we're gonna put the can on the scale and it will say one pound. Now, what you would typically do is you would press tear. Tear will zero the scale out for you. And I think that was actually my camera strap that was on there, it made it heavier. So we're gonna zero it out again. But take the can off, it's gonna read negative one pound. And using this, if you had a full large tank of refrigerant, such as that recovery bottle over there, you would be able to see exactly how much refrigerant you're adding. However, in this case, it doesn't really matter too much because I'm using multiple cans. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this entire can and then I'm gonna weigh the can again to see how much weight the can itself weighs so I can verify the manufacturer's 12 ounce claim. And that way I'll know how much refrigerant I'm putting into the system. Another thing you're gonna need is this can tap, which allows us to connect the can to our manifold set. So the manifold, the yellow line, goes right into here, and then this just screws onto the can, and you screw it down to pierce the can and allow refrigerant to enter the system. Okay, so I've screwed this down everywhere, so the can should be pierced. We have a vacuum in this line, and we have a vacuum on the whole system. So now I'm gonna open the entire line set up to the refrigerant just by opening the valve. Now we'll allow refrigerant to flow into this hose. Now we're gonna open the low side, so the blue line, 
we're going to open this to the refrigerant. When you crank it down like this, you need to open it again. Boom. So you can see the refrigerant flowing in now. So there we go. I didn't realize that. So we're going to allow this to uh, flow in with the upside down so the refrigerant can go into the line and evaporate. But we can see we have pressures already. And what I'm reading is about 55 on the low side and probably about the same on the high side, just a little bit lower, it's lagging a little bit. Um, and what I'm really looking for is between 45 and 55 PSI on the low side and just shy of 250 PSI on the high side. These pressures were um, taken from a pressure temperature chart for R134A and they depend on the exterior temperature, your ambient temperature. As we are adding refrigerant to the system, what I'm gonna do is get in the car and turn it on. Car's on, the clutch out, make sure it doesn't roll. I will address some of these lights that are on. I've got a bad wheel speed sensor. Actually, the wiring is bad. So we're gonna turn the AC on. So we're gonna take it all the way down to minimum. We're gonna turn it on over here. This can is empty right now. It feels very, I don't feel any liquid in it. Right, so our compressor's on, and you can tell the compressor is on because, brighten that up. If we look here, our gauge is reading about 150 PSI on the high side and a little bit under 30 PSI on the low side. I got my temperature gauge. You see outside, it's about 87, 86, 88 degrees, somewhere in there. So our target temperature should be, uh, pressures should be right on point. I can already feel it's getting colder in here. So I'm gonna point this right at the uh, vent. Now, it's colder than outside, it's not cold. But you can see it's dropping, so it's doing something. And we don't expect it to be cold yet because we've only added like 12 ounces of refrigerant, best case scenario, to a system that calls for 43. So right now, check my can, seems pretty empty. What I'm gonna do is close this ball valve and then I'm gonna remove this can of refrigerant and switch it out for another one. All right. One other thing. We go down to our scale. Boot that up. All right, so remember to tear weight. I'm actually gonna go ahead and zero it out again. We're gonna measure that. We expect it to be four ounces, bang on. So we know we just added 12 ounces of refrigerant. The manufacturer's not lying. I'm gonna add all three of these cans and call it that, say that we just have about 36 ounces in there. So in here, traffic guy, I need to move. 33. All right, so I lost my light. The temperature outside dropped to about 80 degrees and the AC fan will no longer kick on because the engine fan is sufficient to keep the AC happy but this should be fully charged, I'm calling it. And um, yeah, so now it's just the wrap up steps. So all this, make sure you close your two valves. So low side, high side, make sure they're both closed before you disconnect the gauges. Um, the can over here, if there's refrigerant left, some of these have a check valve, some of them don't. And this one what I'll do is I'll leave the ball valve connected and I can close it off. And then I don't have to worry, I can use any remaining refrigerant in that system and not expose it to the atmosphere. All you have to do to pop these things off, they come off very easily. You just pull up on them, you can get a little bit hot, but aside from that, everything will seal up. Put your caps on, you're done. Then for your vacuum pump, you wanna make sure you drain your oil every time um, because it will absorb water and moisture and that's bad for your pump. So you wanna refill that and drain it every single time you use it. So that's all. If you like this video, uh, please hit like and subscribe. It helps me out and I want to keep making these videos. And then I will also have all the equipment that I used, every single thing, linked in the description of this video so that you can buy it as well.